Hi and welcome back to another video of Medic Notes. This video will be on multiple pregnancy. Multiple pregnancy consists of two or more fetuses. And if you are pregnant, the chance of getting a twin babies is 1 out of 80 cases. Whereas the chance of getting triplets is 1 out of 6,400 cases, which is quite rare. The classification of multiple pregnancy can be classified based on the number of fetuses, whether twin, triplets, or quadruplets, number of fertilized eggs, which the term is zygosity, how many placenta are there, chorionicity, and how many amniotic cavities, amniocity. So these are the few terms we have to take note. So this is the comparison between dizygotic twin and monozygotic twin. So for dizygotic twin, there are two separated ova fertilized by two separated sperm. Whereas for monozygotic, it is a single fertilized ovum which later splits into two identical twins. So the monozygotic will be identical twins, whereas dizygotic because it is two separate ova and two separate sperm, the twins will be non-identical. For dizygotic twin, it can be same sex or different sex. However, for monozygotic twins, they are the same sex, either both males or both females. For dizygotic twin, DCDA is dichorionic diamniotic twin. So there are two placentas and two amniotic cavities. Whereas for monozygotic twins, it depends on the timing when the embryo divides. It can be dichorionic diamniotic, monochorionic diamniotic, where the two fetus share the, two, share the same placenta but there are two amniotic cavities, or they can also be monochorionic monoamniotic where they share the same placenta and share the same amniotic cavities. So these are the risk factors of multiple pregnancy, which includes in vitro fertilization, increase in maternal age, high parity, black race, and also if there is a maternal family history of multiple pregnancy. The clinical features so some of the common presentation in multiple pregnancy is the uterine sus will be larger than date compared to the period of gestation. The mother might complain of increased morning sickness, also called as hyperemesis gravidarum, excessive weight gain, especially during early pregnancy, and she might also feel multiple fetal movements at different sides of the abdomen at the same time, suggesting there is more than one fetus. On physical examination, on inspection, the abdomen might be bigger than usual. In palpation, the clinical fundal height and symphysial fundal height does not correspond to the period of gestation, where it is usually larger than the date. We can palpate for more than two fetal poles, multiple small parts, and they might be polyhydramnios. On auscultation, we will be able to hear two or more fetal heart rates, suggesting multiple fetuses. So moving on to the management, for antenatal management, first trimester scan is done to determine the chorionicity and it should be done between the 11 to 14 weeks. Refer to a specialist as early as possible if unsure of the chorionicity. So during the ultrasound scan, we have to look for a separating membrane. If there is no separating membrane, it suggests a monoamniotic twin where they are sharing a same amniotic cavity. And through the ultrasound scan, we should also determine the chorionicity. Look at the number of placenta mass. If there are two separated mass, it suggests dichorionicity. If there is single placenta mass, it is monochorionicity. A T sign suggests monochorionic, whereas lambda sign suggests dichorionic. And if there is a gender discrepancy, it suggests a dichorionic diamniotic twin, DCDA if one is male and one is female. And we can also look at the thickness of the separating membrane. If less than 2 mm, it is suggesting of a monochorionic twin. So we can label the fetus according to right and left or upper and lower. So booking and follow-up should be done in the hospital and advise the mother on the importance of hospital delivery. Monitor the fetal growth through serial growth scan, and the interval will depend on the chorionicity of the fetuses. So if, if there are dichorionic diamniotic, 
twins, we can do a four weekly growth scan from 20 weeks until delivery. If they are monochronic diamniotic, where they share the same placenta, we do a two weekly growth scan from 16 weeks until delivery. Whereas for the timing of delivery, in uncomplicated twin pregnancies, for DCDA, the timing of delivery can be set at 37 to 38 weeks. MCDA, 36 to 37 weeks after corticosteroid cover. MCMA can deliver at 32 to 34 weeks after discussion with the pediatrics team to confirm the availability of ventilators and also cover with corticosteroids. So for the mode of delivery, caesarean section is recommended in cases of non cephalic first twin or women with previous LSCS scar and also MCMA twins, which are the monochoronic monoamniotic twins. We should do a caesarean section. Caesarean section can also be considered in some circumstances, such as death of the one of the fetus, especially if the leading twin is has died already, or in MCDA twins, any other complicated twin pregnancy, or if the parents request for C-section. So for the intrapartum management of vaginal delivery, we admit the patient, insert IV line and take blood for full blood count in group 7 whole 2 units, continuous CTG, Pathogram ultrasound can be done to check the viability of the fetus, their presentation, liquid volume, placenta site, and also estimated fetal weight. And give epidural analgesia and counsel the patient regarding the second stage of labor. Also inform the pediatrics, pediatrician, anesthetist, and also obstetrician. So during labor, stand by OT and do episiotomy. Deliver the first twin as normal delivery. And after the delivery of the first twin, determine the lie and the presentation of the second twin through ultrasound. Continue the CTG monitoring of the fetus. So if the second twin, if it is in non-longitudinal lie, it is preferable to do an external cephalic version. Or if it is unsuccessful, we can do an internal podalic version. So if the baby is in the longitudinal lie, which is the normal lie, and presenting part is in the pelvis, we can do an artificial rupture of membrane if the membrane is still intact, or spontaneous release of membrane can be done. Monitor the uterine contractions and consider starting oxytocin if the, the contractions are weak. So the second twin has to be delivered within 30 minutes, and we can give pitocin infusion to prevent postpartum hemorrhage. And after delivery, in the third stage of labor, we should inspect the placenta to check the chorionicity. So the summary of the labor, if the two twins, two babies, if both are vertex presentation, which is vertex, vertex delivery, the second twin, we can perform an artificial rupture of membrane to induce the contraction. If the two twins are vertex and non-vertex delivery, which means the first baby is vertex presentation, which is normal, and the second baby is maybe bridge or other, other lie, we do an external cephalic version or internal podalic version of the second twin. Whereas if the first twin, another scenario is non-vertex, vertex delivery. So the first twin is non-vertex presentation. We, if the first twin is not in longitudinal line, we have to do an elective lower segment caesarean section. So these are the possible outcomes of the multiple pregnancy. So let's take a look at some of the complications and risks of multiple pregnancy. So the risks and complications for the mother, she might have anemia or preterm delivery due to over distension of the uterus. Pregnancy induced hypertension or preeclampsia, gestational diabetes mellitus, antepartum or postpartum hemorrhage, preterm prelabor rupture of membrane, and also increased risk of operative delivery. Whereas for the fetus, they might face complications such as TTTS, especially seen in monochorionic diamniotic twins, where they share the same placenta. So TTTS is the twin-to-twin -twin transfusion syndrome. And other complications are like intrauterine growth restriction, acardia, polyhydramnios, 
cord accident, especially in monoamniotic twins where they share the same amniotic cavity, cord prolapse, log twins, or even congenital abnormalities. There are also some risks in trapatum, where the baby might have mild presentation, fetal hypoxia, especially in second twin, cord prolapse or cord entanglement, head entrapment, and there might be a risk of operative delivery as well. So that's all for this video, thank you.